Welcome to part three of this Football Manager 2020 experiment where we're seeing if Africa can dominate world football. Thank you for the support on parts one and two. I love the fact that there's plenty of you enjoying this experiment series. A few of you are interested in me doing this experiment in other parts of the world, maybe using two or three nations or particular regions like I've done in this experiment. I'm certainly considering doing that. If you do have any ideas for other alternative experiments, you can always get in touch with me, stick it in the comment section below, tweet me, etc. There's various ways. As always, if you do enjoy this video, please leave a like. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. That would be much appreciated. Anyway, let's crack on. So I'm going to start off by showing you Mohamed Kamara, probably the biggest success story. In fact, he's definitely the biggest success story in regards to players in this experiment so far. Barcelona legend, 312 goals in 402 games. I think that's just league appearances and league goals as well, by the way. Look how many Champions Leagues he's won. Barcelona have been really dominant in this particular competition. But he's just, he's won so many. He's won so many things. Of course, he's retired now. He's been retired a while. Uh, he won the Ballon d'Or nine times. It, it's been stupendous for him. Look how many awards and competitions and various things he's won. So it's now July 2050 and we've seen another World Cup pass us by. So let's see who's managed to win this one. See how successful the African nations have been. So as you can see, South Africa actually finished above Brazil in Group A. We saw Congo qualify from Group B. Cameroon qualify from Group C. Democratic Republic of Congo crashed out in the group stage, unfortunately. But Sudan finished top of Group F above France. Magnificent achievement. Nigeria qualified. Guinea qualified from their group. Angola qualified. Ghana qualified. And Burkina Faso topped their group as well. So lots of success in the group stages of this particular competition from some nations that we haven't actually seen do very well before. Uh, South Africa defeated Congo on penalties in the second round. We saw Cameroon crash out, unfortunately. Sudan lost on penalties to Peru. Guinea lost to Belgium. Nigeria lost to Portugal. Ghana beat Turkey on penalties. Angola beat Chile on penalties. And is that everyone? Burkina Faso went through to the third round as well. So quite a few teams crashing out, but three teams, I think, getting through to the third round. But unfortunately, South Africa lost. Ghana lost. And Burkina Faso lost. So all of the African nations were out by the time the quarterfinals took place. Uh, which is unfortunate. Just one of those things. It wasn't... I mean, it, it was a very successful group stage, but they just bottled it a bit maybe in the uh, knockout rounds. Argentina ended up winning this particular World Cup. So if we go back to the third round and take a look at Burkina Faso, because that's an interesting story. 24th in the world rankings. They've come from all the way down here. Four years ago, they were... What, about 50th, and they've gone all the way up to 24th, which is pretty magnificent. Let's take a look at the current world ranking. South Africa is still the highest. They've dropped down a place recently. The only team in the top four, uh, top 20 currently, but Burkina Faso are doing very well. Let's have a look at their team. So, they've produced a well-rounded squad. Lots of players with over 140 current ability. No outstanding stars. That's, But this is better. We've seen some nations produce superstars absolute world-class players some of the best players ever to grace the game but the rest of the the, the nation is, is is terrible whereas Burkina Faso managed to produce a few good players uh, who are all they're not bad that I mean 150 is easily Premier League quality he's playing for Sevilla as you can see there's a 142 player playing for Man United not playing very much admittedly but he's still been good enough to move to Manchester United, so that's not bad going. Uh, Ghana obviously got to this stage as well. They're currently 34th in the world rankings. Uh, they've got one very good player, Asamoah, playing for Barcelona, moved for £50 million, so he's he's very good. And then South Africa have done really well. They've been the best team in this experiment, quite clearly. They've obviously won the World Cup. And looking at their squad... They've got a very good player in Moffakeng who plays for Manchester United. £100 million player, moved from Spurs. He's really good, really good central midfielder. And they've got some very good players here. You'd expect them to go a bit further in the World Cup with that quality. Look at how many players have 150 and above. It's easily the best, best nation around from Africa anyway. So this part three will have a similar format to part two where we look through a few World Cups fairly quickly and then at the end of the video look at all the other competitions, the Ballon d'Or, and some individual players of note. So, 2054 World Cup then. Will it be a similar story to the last one? Let's hope it's... There's a, there's a bit of an improvement. Tunisia lost in the group stage, as you can see. That Morocco went through. Congo went through. We saw Cameroon go through. Kenya crash out. Libya lost as well. 
Uh, but as we get towards the bottom, a bit more success, Democratic Republic of Congo, South Africa, Senegal and Nigeria all went through to the second round where Morocco beat Turkey 3-1 despite an injury or two late goals there to get through. Congo won on penalties against Ukraine. Cameroon beat Scotland 2-1 despite a red card. South Africa thrashed Democratic Republic of Congo 4-0. Uh, and Nigeria lost against Senegal in another all-African clash, 3-1. So, the third round then, <laughs> some crazy games here. France 7, Denmark 3, England 7, Cameroon 1. Poor old Cameroon getting murdered by England. Uh, Congo lost against Spain on penalties. In fact, all the African teams went out this stage. Senegal lost against Serbia and South Africa lost against Germany. So, it's the same as the 2050 World Cup, really. Bit disappointing for the African nations. Clicking on the wrong thing here. Uh, let's look at the semis. France and England in the final then. And uh, England won. Third place playoff was uh, won by Serbia, by the way. But yeah, final. 4-3 to England after extra time. Bit of a classic final, that one. But yeah, it's disappointing for the African nations this time around. So the most successful teams, once again, South Africa doing very well. They're currently 12th in the world rankings, by the way. So... Have a look at that. They're clearly the best African team once again. I did think they would probably do the best. Let's just turn this off. Don't need to, to hide that anymore. Um, Morocco and Cameroon in the 20s as well. Looking at the team, they've still got Mofaken, who's really good. Excellent play. 118 caps now. Playing for Atletico Madrid as well. Made for £113 million from Man United. My uh, player spreadsheet of notable players has kind of gone... By the wayside, because there's just so many good players. I, I, I just it was taking too long to fill them all in, to be honest. And uh, yeah, I'm just I, it would have been useful, I suppose, to have them all listed. But I, I just there's just there's just too many world class players. Um, who else got through uh, to this stage? So Senegal currently 40th in the world rankings. Uh, they've they've got one very good player playing for PSG, Abud Majib Nadal, who's pretty young actually, only 23. And he's, he's almost reached his potential, so he'll probably reach that. And Cameroon. Oh, and Morocco as well lost at this stage, of course. Oh, Cameroon have some okay players, but they were completely destroyed by England, weren't they? Morocco lost in extra time against Holland. Uh, let's have a look at their squad then. So similar to Cameroon, I suppose. No one's no no outstanding players in there. Let's move on to the 2058 World Cup then. So South Africa qualified easily. Madagascar at another World Cup and successfully navigating through the group stage. Morocco also went through. Burkina Faso finished above England. So they must have beaten them. Nigeria also through. Cameroon through top of their group. Zimbabwe through. This is very successful. Congo through as well. Senegal, Algeria, and that's it. So all the African teams qualified. I think that's the first time we've seen that. In the second round, then, South Africa beat Madagascar in an all-African um, second round match. Morocco lost against Belgium. Uh, Nigeria beat Burkina Faso 1-0. Zimbabwe lost against Cameroon. Lots of um, all-African clashes here, which is a bit of a shame. You kind of, I mean, it guarantees African teams in the next round, but it would be nice to see all of them progress through, wouldn't it? Congo lost against Argentina. Sen Senegal beat Algeria. And I think that's everyone. So are they more successful this time? Let's hope so. Third round. South Africa out. Nigeria out. Cameroon out. And Senegal out. Oh, it's happened again. The uh, European teams are currently dominating, aren't they? And Brazil and Argentina. There's not so many surprising World Cups right now. We did see some surprising... Obviously, Turkey won it. That was a surprise. Austria won it. But lately, it's uh, been a bit more predictable. France ended up winning this final 2-1 against Brazil. So yeah, that is a shame. South Africa, still the best ranked team from Africa in the world, I presume. Let's just double check. Uh, yes, they are. Nigeria, the next best in 23rd. Any new players that have come through in the, the recent years? Oh yes, Marcos Vinicius, playing for Man City. Moved for 98 million pounds from Dortmund, who signed in from Orlando Pirates. He is exceptional it's an attacking midfielder wow so many unbelievable attributes there they've got some really quality players they should be they've underperformed at this world cup i think they're only getting through to the third round losing against ukraine let's just have a look at their team to compare yeah south africa's team are better than ukraine but they lost that is a real shame nigeria 23rd in the world ranking second best african team at the moment uh similar team to ukraine i suppose quality wise they're certainly not as good as South Africa. Cameroon, 31st in the world rankings. Yeah, not too, not too dissimilar to uh, 
Nigeria, I suppose. And lastly, Senegal, who also managed to get through to this stage. They've got one really good player. It's this guy, again. Yeah, he's really good. Um, am I... Yeah, this, this World Cup was actually in South Africa. If I just turn this off, you'll see France. Well, we already showed that France won, didn't I? Yeah, South Africa were the hosts. Uh, so, yeah, no, that's good. It's, it's, they've hosted a, a second World Cup. I wonder if there's been any other African World Cups. No, obviously 2010. But since, Oh, Morocco did. I, I didn't see that one. Morocco hosted the World Cup in 2038. So we have seen two African World Cups in this experiment so far. It's the end of the 2062 World Cup, which took place in the United States of America, who instantly crashed out in the group stage. I think we're we'll progress five World Cups in today's video. I hope you guys are still enjoying this. I'm, I'm planning on doing a part four, maybe a part five. Who knows? We'll see. See if you're still, in enjoy see if you're still enjoying it. Uh, anyway, let's have a look at the group stage. So Senegal went through, as you can see, Cameroon, Egypt, Togo, Guinea-Bissau went out. South Africa won their group. Algeria won their group. Burkina Faso went through. Nigeria went through. And Mali would, went out in the group stage. So the second round, hoping for a bit more success here. Senegal lost against Holland, though. Egypt lost against Egypt. Cameroon lost against France. This is not good. Togo lost. South Africa lost. Burkina Faso won. They're our only hope. I think, not cause, yeah, because Nigeria lost as well. Oh dear, that did not go to plan in the second round. Third round, for those interested, I, I do have the detail level on. You can select the detail level. So these games are being played out. It's nothing to do with reputation. They're literally being played out between the two teams. We can watch, we can look, see the goals, etc. because the detail level has been played out. Uh, third round, so where's Burkina Faso? Oh, they went through, they beat Mexico 3-0. Oh, thank you. Koala. Oh, great name. Koala scored a hat-trick for Burkina Faso and sent them through to the quarter-final of the World Cup where they lost against Belgium. But they're the first African team to reach the last eight for a while, aren't they? It's been far too long. Okay, the uh, semi-final, Belgium and Germany went through. Third place playoff, Ukraine got to their second uh, third place playoff in a row. And then the final was won by Germany, beating Belgium 1-0 after extra time. So let's have a look at this Burkina Faso team then, because they've done really well here to get to this stage. Currently 26th in, I'm looking at transfers, 26th in the world rankings. I assume South Africa is still at the top. They are, but they're dropping. They're down to 20th. We don't have a team in... Well, we've got a team just about in the top 20. Uh, but there's four teams in the top 30. I haven't really scrolled down, haven't I, in this video. I'll just go all the way down to the bottom. You can see the same old faces at the bottom there. I don't think there's any massive surprises towards the top. Mozambique doing well in 60th, I suppose. Uh, let's have a look at the team then that they currently have. Not the best. They've got... Decent players. This is, I, I use this word a lot, decent. It's a decent squad. They're not exceptional. There's no standout stars. They're certainly weaker than the South African teams we've seen, but they've done very well to get to the quarterfinal with Koala, their best player, leading the way for them. He plays for Lokomotiv Moscow. Spent quite a few years in Portugal. Uh, the second best player does play for PSG, actually, uh, and was a starter last year. He's a, he's a central midfielder. Oh, he's a right winger and a central midfielder. Certainly looks more like a winger with 16 on dribbling, doesn't he? He's pacey. I'm surprised he's he's getting in the, the PSG team, to be honest. He's done quite well, though. He's played well. Um, so, no, that does that does surprise me because he's, not the, he's only got 149 current ability. And considering PSG must have so many stars, look at these players that they have. They've got um, someone from Burundi who's their best player. 189 current ability, 27 years old, signed for 86 million pounds. Bigger Imana. The second player is African as well. In fact, look at the top five players are all from Africa. I'm not surprised by this because we've seen them being snapped up by PSG. Lois Lima plays for Sao to Tome in the islands. Um, and 114 million pounds he moved for. What a, what a midfielder he is. Then we've got someone from Guinea, Mamadou Diallo. He moved for £86 million. Pounds. What a player he is as well. And then Segler from uh, Benin. He's good. And lastly, Kenneth. Another Kenneth has been born. Not Kenneth from Djibouti. It's Kenneth from South Africa this time. Signed for only £1.9 million. Pounds. And he's uh, he's still young. He, he could potentially get even better. You've got a Liberian in here, James Morris. 
So there's so many players from uh, Africa that are playing for these top teams. Bigger, what a name, Bigger Nagui, who uh, is signed from Zamalak. Zamalak is still dominating, I presume. But there's so many. I mean, if, let's look at Real Madrid, for example. What sort of players do they have in their team? They've got a Nigerian in there, Mohamed Danvide, who's really, really good. Got a Malian in there, Nabilia Sissoko, 102 caps for his country. A Senegalese player, Dieng. So it's similar, similar story. Barcelona, I presume, is, is, is similar as well. We've got their best player from, from South Africa, Marcus Vinicius, of course. Remember him. An Ethiopian in there, Bakeli, who has 108. Oh, oh, wow. I've never actually seen a player with 200 potential. They've both not reached it, but the first one is Argentinian. He poss He's 34, so he might have. He probably didn't get to 200. I'm not. I'm pretty sure I've never seen, apart from a player I've created myself. I don't think I've ever seen a player come on. You know, appear on the game with 200 potential. I'm assuming this. Yeah, he definitely didn't reach it. Uh, he spent too long in Ethiopia, but this player was born with 200 potential, and he wasn't. Re it wasn't realised really until Bayer Leverkusen bought him, and then suddenly he played well for them. And, and Barcelona have recently purchased him, but he had 200 potential. But unfortunately, he didn't reach. But he's still one of the best players in the world with 183. There's a player from Comoros who's um, got huge potential, uh, huge current ability, as well as you can see the hit 182. Oh, there's been so many magnificent African players that have been produced in this universe. The best thing to do, actually, is just look at the top teams in Europe to find the best African players rather than going through all the, the African nations individually. This guy plays for Equatorial Guinea, and he's playing for Man City. We've got another South African in here. South Africa just features so heavily. We've got a Senegalese player playing for Man City as well. Man United probably have Africans as well. Yeah, and Namibian, 180 current ability. Liverpool, let's have a look at them. Uh, South African, Shatolo, the attacking midfielder. Uh, an Algerian in their team as well. It's just brilliant. I love it. Moving on to the next World Cup then. End of the 2066 World Cup held in England, 100 years after the 1966 World Cup, of course. So Democratic Republic of Congo went through, Liberia lost in the group stage, Ivory Coast went out as well, um, Zimbabwe topped their group though, so did South Africa, Algeria went through, Cameroon went through, Guinea went through, uh, anyone else, Libya, they went through, Tunisia as well, so quite a few teams going through to the second round, and wow! Look at this, Democratic Republic of Congo beating England on penalties, helped by the fact England got a red card. But that is very impressive. If we just compare the two squads, so the England squad, they've got a very talented team, as you would expect. And then Democratic Republic of Congo, it's, it's decent, but it's certainly not as good as England, looking at the top players anyway. But yeah, brilliant win for them. Uh, who else went through? Zimbabwe lost on penalties against Russia. South Africa beat Uruguay. Algeria was thrashed by Germany. Cameroon lost against Argentina. Guinea beat Croatia 3-1. Really good win. Of course, Guinea had Kamara, the, the best player we've seen so far. But obviously, he's, that's 20 years ago now. Uh, Libya lost as well. Okay, moving on to the third round. And they've done it again. 2-1 win against Brazil. That is outstanding from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Mangala with the winning goal in the end. Let's just have a quick look at the Brazil team. They usually have outstanding players, of course. And yes, probably the best player in the world. Pedro Henrique, 195 current ability. But they managed to beat Brazil. Amazing. Uh, next up, South Africa lost against Germany. Guinea lost against uh, Argentina. So we're down, and Tunisia, they also got through. They lost against Spain. Down to the quarterfinal then. Last team standing, and they've lost against Germany, unfortunately. Maputo scored a goal, but it was actually Moroz for Germany that was the standout player and sent them through to the semi finals. Maybe they went on and won it, and then it's not so bad for, for Democratic Republic of Congo. Yep, Germany through to the final against Turkey and the winners were Germany 1-0 so not so bad really in the end let's have a look at the Congo 26th in the world rankings they have risen up quite significantly recently and the be they're the second best team South Africa still the best 17th in the world rankings we'll just quickly scroll down to the bottom uh, Zanzibar still at the bottom with Mayotte and Djibouti 
Reunion have actually overtaken Djibouti. That's not bad at all. Well, let's go back to the old Congo then. Uh, so, yeah, the best player, Dixon, M Dixon Micha, something like that. Moved for £14.5 million pounds to Dortmund. He's a good player. Really good winger. Uh, I think they've got some they've got some decent players. Murphy Maputo as well, playing for Porto. They've done really well recently. Well, let's move on to the last World Cup of this part three. We're in part three, aren't we? Part three, yes. Here we are then, the 2070 World Cup. Long way into the future now. Senegal have gone through, Mali have gone through, Cameroon won their group, Namib Namibia went through in second place. Tunisia topped their group. Nigeria went through. Egypt in second place. Uh, anyone else? Burkina Faso. South Africa actually lost in the group stage, which is a surprise for them. DL Congo went through, and that is everyone. So, yeah, South Africa disappointing. Second round, Mali beat Russia on penalty. Senegal went out. Cameroon beat Nib Namibia 4-3 in a cracking game. Tunisia went out on penalties to Sweden. Nigeria beat France. That's a really good win. Egypt uh, lost against Denmark 5-2. Burkina Faso lost against Belgium, unfortunately. And DR Congo lost against Colombia. So not many teams getting through to the third round. And Portugal did beat Mali 2-0, unfortunately. Cameroon lost against Spain 2-1. And Nigeria lost against Argentina. So I think it's everyone, isn't it? That is a shame. So no one through to the, the quarterfinals. Been a little bit of a disappointing part three with the World Cup. Of course, in the last part, we saw South Africa win it. Nigeria get to a final. But it just hasn't happened for them. There's been a bit of a barren few years for the African teams. They've been producing world-class players, that's for sure. The European teams are full of world-class players. Portugal ended up winning the World Cup, by the way. So, yeah, let's have a look at other things. Golden ball. Let's start with the, the World Golden Ball. Of course, we saw Kamara win it many times in a row, all the way back here. Uh, but it was, did we see another African win it? Let's carry, oh, a Tanzanian, Suleiman Manula. Did I miss this last time? Where, where did we go up to in the last part? I've completely forgotten. Either way, this guy uh, was very good, played for Barcelona, managed to win a golden ball, the uh, Ballon d'Or, whatever you want to call it. Very successful career. Uh, after that point then, did he only, he only won it once, didn't he? And did he even... He did finish third. Yeah. Um, we then saw Democratic Republic Congolese player, Abdallah Hamdan, finish third. Oh, a Malawian won it, Kabwalo, at the age of 38. He managed to win it. I know I'm getting confused. I actually did six World Cups in this part, didn't I? Not just five. We, we went six World Cups into the future. I'm trying to figure out how have I not seen these players? And I realised, actually, the last point that we ended was 2046 but I didn't see the Tanzanian finishing third in the in the last part too so yeah since then of course we've seen him win it we've seen uh, Cabralo win it for Mali well whilst at Atletico Madrid uh, Hamden won it another African so we've had four different Africans win the uh, world golden ball Cabralo won it again in 2051 and since then, have we seen anyone? Yes, a Cameroonian, Nadanza. Did we look at Hamden? Hamden's retired as well. Has uh, Nadanza retired? Yes, he's retired as well. So we've seen a variety of winners, haven't we, from different African countries feature, which is brilliant. And look, a Libyan won it. Elmabruk, who's also retired. Barcelona, there's just been so many players produced. So yes, the African nations haven't done particularly well at recent World Cups, but they have produced multiple players that have featured in the top three of the uh, Ballon d'Or award. A player from Comoros, which is incredible. Ali Abdullah winning the Ballon d'Or. That is fantastic. Finished second as well. He actually won it three times in the end. And then um, since then, we've had a Guinean feature, Diallo. Remember him? He's finished third. Abdullah finished third again. Uh, Diallo finished second. We've seen... Oh, South African win it. I think this is the first South African. Endu, Endulalu. Endulula. Endulalu. Something like that. <laughs> He's got 179 uh, current ability. Playing for Barcelona these days. Man City actually made a loss on him, didn't they? There he is finishing second. And a Kenyan finishing third. Odiambo. Playing for Atletico Madrid. Signed for £139 million. Pounds. And this is, this is brilliant. A player from Madagascar has ended up winning. We've got, oh, Africa. Okay, Africa are dominating the world officially. Their players are anyway. 
one, two, three, what a name. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin with that. Um, that is just unbelievable. What a player, what a player. So he's ended up winning and what a name. Even His name's even better than, than his footballing ability. Endelulu finished uh, second and then, then the Kenyan finishing third. This is just fantastic, I love it. I assume it's a similar story for all these other awards as well. In fact, the Kenyan managed to win Football of the Year. He won it twice in a row. Uh, and then there's the, the World Player of the Year, which uh, Rand, Randry, we'll call him Randry. He featured World well, Team of the Year. Look at the all-time Team of the Year then. So in goal, we have, he's French. Do we have, Jimmy Richards, he's, he's English. Are there going to be many Africans here? We have an Algerian. At left back, we have a player from Benin. And on the right hand side of midfield, we have a player, another, uh, he's the same one. We have a player, oh, Mbappe's in there. We have another Frenchman. Um, but Mohamed Kamer is up front, of course. We've also got uh, a player from Chad. Remember him, Fabrice Jingabe. He's, in, he's on the bench. Diallo's on the bench. Another Diallo is on the bench. There's two Diallo's on the bench. And Ali Abdullah as well. So it is. Dominated by African players, particularly the bench. Then you've got under-21 football of the year, which South African has won it most recently. Uh, Cameroon players won it. Algerian. Oh, there's so many. Ivorian, Guinean. There's a lot of quality players that we have seen win this award. Um, let's just go back to when, when we first started this part three. So, yes, play from Chad. Player from uh, South Africa there. And we've seen an Algerian win it. So loads of different players winning that award, which is good to see. Goalkeeper of the year, I imagine it's probably a similar story. In fact, we've got a Botswana goalkeeper winning goalkeeper of the year two years ago. He's won it a couple times, in fact. Let's have a look at the worldwide reputation. So Zamalek, five stars. There's still five stars. That is sensational. Peter Cech is the, is the manager. A French Peter Cech. Uh, we've what's their financial situation? They've still got an underwriter, so they've still got brilliant facilities, perfect facilities. Their squads it's not as good as the last time we looked, but it's pretty good. Are there any other teams in here? So we've got a team from Egypt. I don't think there's going to be anyone else towards the top. Oh, there's a team from Cameroon with four and a half star. It's Cotuan Sports who have won the Champ uh, African Champions League a couple of times. Look at this. They've still got their underwriter. They've still got perfect facilities. And having a look at their squad, they've, they've got an all right squad. Four and a half star potential, that is not potential, reputation, sorry. And there's a team from Mali with four and a half stars. Unbelievable. I love this. They've got big squad. Look at how many players they've got. And they've got a decent squad. How many times have I said the word decent in this experiment? Oh, that is magnificent. I love that. We've really changed the landscape of football. We've got a four star Ghanaian team here as well. World football is, is unrecognisable. Well, to be fair, it is recognisable. We've still got the, the top European teams winning everything and the uh, World Cup still being dominated generally by South American and European uh, nations. But we've certainly changed something and it, it has been pretty intriguing. There's a South African team as well here, at Orlando Pirates, who've dominated in South Africa. As you can see, they've won most of the league titles. African Cup of Nations, and let's have a look, quick look. So since 2046, Burundi have won it, Burkina Faso have won it, Congo have won it. We've had some more interesting winners this time. Kenya have also managed to win it and finished second. Ivory Coast have won the two most recent competitions. Then we've got the Chan, which uh, Nigeria have dominated, haven't they? But Angola and Burundi have won it as well. African Under-20 Cup of Nations. So the Gambia have managed to win that. That's brilliant. wonder how they're getting on. 97th in the world rankings. Not a brilliant squad, but they seem to overachieve with the squad they have, don't they? And then we've got the under-23 Cup of Nations, which is less surprising. South Africa have won the most recent one. Then we've got the African Champions League. Zamalek have been the most successful team, of course. But there's been a bit of variation. We've seen a, a team from Mali end up winning it. And a team from Nigeria, Supersport United from South Africa have won it. Uh, Asante from Ghana have won it. Zamalek, of course, won it. Coach and Sport have won it. Uh, but yeah, this is the team from Mali's done particularly well. They've managed to win it four times since the last part. Let's have a quick look through all of the African nations and see if there's any outstanding players. There's someone that had 190 potential Algeria but hasn't managed to reach it. Angola, 
152 is the best current ability. Oh, this is the best player yet. And we've seen him feature in the, in the Ballon d'Or. Jacinthi Segler, playing for Atletico Madrid. Has had three transfers over 100 million pounds. Look at the accumulation there of all that money. And he is the best one yet. He's the best African player in terms of current ability that we have seen, I think. He's from Benin, which is unusual. 124th in the world rankings, remember. And they've produced the best player one of the best players ever to grace the game. Central midfielder, left-footed central midfielder. Oh, it's just, he's just fantastic, isn't he? 19 passing, 20 vision, 20 first touch, really good physicals as well. What a player. So that is the best one yet. Although Camera, of course, won multiple Ballon d'Ors. Moving on to Botswana, someone of 165 current ability. Burkina Faso, Burundi. Uh, Cameroon, oh, okay, we've beaten it. Onana, Patrick Onana. Has he won a Ballon d'Or? Just have a quick look. Won under 21 football of the year. Was it, uh, yeah, African footballer of the year. We haven't had a look at this. What a, wow, what a player. 100, what's it, 197 current ability. That is, that is the best one yet. He's a striker as well. He's outstanding. And he's recently moved to Chelsea for 60 million pounds, which is a bargain. Um, he scored 20, only 20 goals this season in all competitions, which isn't the greatest. But he's, in terms of his actual current ability, that is unbelievable. So Cameroon have produced a player and a half. They're currently only 20th in the world rankings, but it's it's fairly high, I suppose. And with him, only 24 years old, they might be able to go on to bigger and better things. Cape Verde then. No one really there. So this is interesting. We've seen better players in this part three, but actually less success from the African nations. This chap from Chad, Chad have produced some really good players, haven't they? He's got 193 potential. I don't think he's gonna reach it, but still they've produced someone with the potential to go to get to that level. Uh, Congo have one decent player, Kevin. Uh, and then we've got Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, Djibouti, they've produced a few good players. They've got a decent goalkeeper at the moment. Egypt, they've obviously produced some good players as well, but they have underperformed on the whole. Equatorial Guinea, uh, no one really there. Eritrea, Ethiopia, uh, Gabon, uh, Ghana. Oh, he's got potential, but he's never going to reach it. Another Diallo. There's so many Diallos. And then Guinea. Uh, Guinea-Bissau, Ivory Coast. Not re no one really there. Oh, okay. He's the best. This is the best guy. And I don't think we've actually seen this chap. It, Kenyan. David Odiambo. Odiambo. With 199 current ability and 199 potential. Not the 200 that we saw previously, but the other player with 200 potential hadn't reached it. This guy has reached his potential of 199. He started at Waterworks in Kenya, who are an amateur team with a local reputation. They still have their underwriter. I think all the clubs have kept their underwriter because they're teams that aren't really playable, so they've just kept them. <laughs> that is unbelievable. I mean, this team from South Africa got it for free and then sold it for only £15,250 to Zenit. He sold him for 43 and then Spurs bought him for 108 and then Atletico Madrid for 139 199 current ability. What a player. He's a left winger. Oh, this is amazing. I love this. I love... Oh. I just love looking through these wonder kids and world-class players that this experiment has produced. Libya have produced a pretty good player there. Uh, Madagascar, of course, have. So he's not even 199, but he's won the uh, Ballon d'Or, of course. Ah, oh, he's exceptional as well. So Madagascar currently 100th in the world. They've actually dropped down since he's been playing for them, strangely. Uh, he is currently 24, so there's still plenty of football ahead of him. Then we've got a player playing for Malawi, who's really good. Peter Kanyenda, uh, Mali, Marit. Oh, there's there's just so many good players. In a majority of teams, there's someone that's pretty good. Even in Mayotte, there's a really good player. Uh, Morocco have a decent player there. Mozambique, Namibia, Niger, Nigeria have got a good player. They've all got someone that's decent. Rwanda have produced someone who's got 190 potential, but he hasn't managed to reach. He's got 150 current ability. Sao Tome and Princip. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce that, but yeah, they don't really have anyone. Uh, Senegal, they don't have anyone at the moment either. Seychelles, though, they they had someone with 191 potential. He's never reached it, and he's a long way off, 70 off that. Just shows 
just because you've got the potential, you need the right tools around you, the right personnel around you to go on to bigger and better things. But their best player has ended up playing for PSG, actually. That's not bad for uh, someone from Seychelles. Sierra Leone, got player 163 current ability, 169 for Somalia. South Africa, of course. Uh, oh, wow. We've not seen this guy. Hongwa, a goalkeeper. Surely the best goalkeeper in the world. 195 current ability, 29 years old. Plays for Real Madrid. What a goalkeeper he is. And they just keep producing the, the best all-round team. And it's probably because we have the South African League loaded. So they're more likely to... All the clubs are more likely to produce better players, I, I think. Uh, that's probably the main reason. If we were to be able to download some custom databases for every single African nation, then maybe things would be a little bit different. South Sudan, not doing particularly well. Sudan do have a really good player. Sudan Ahmed has got 82 caps, plays for PSG, really good player. Uh, Swaziland, player with 181 potential, he's never going to reach it. Tanzania, they've done okay recently, haven't they? The Gambia, haven't really got anyone at the moment. Togo, same. Tunisia, okay squad. Uganda, similar. Uh, and Zambia, they've got one good player, Martin Sinkala. One very good player, I must add. And Zanzibar, no one there. And lastly, Zimbabwe. So loads and loads of spectacular players in these African nations. I've lost track of what we have and haven't looked at, but I don't think we've looked at the Olympics, have we? We've seen Burkina Faso finish second twice, and Algeria finish second as well, South Africa finishing third. And we've seen another African Olympics, Morocco held uh, this particular one, the most recent one anyway. We've not seen any more Af Oh, we have, I'll tell a lie, we have seen some more under-20 African World Cup winners because, of course, in the last part, we saw Ghana and South Africa win it. Cameroon had won it previously. Cameroon have won it again, but Tunisia, Tunisia won the competition before them. And we've also seen South Africa finish second twice and Cameroon and Sudan. Have, oh, wow, that is interesting. So do they have a good young squad? Let's have... They've obviously got this one very good player, but I don't think they'd have been able to compete. They don't. No, they don't really. Oh, under 20s, sorry. No, they don't. How have they finished second? That is really quite incredible how they've managed to finish second in that particular competition. So let's end today's video by taking a look at the spreadsheet once again. So as you can see, South Africa still have achieved the highest world ranking during this experiment. It doesn't look like we're going to see an African nation rise into the top five certainly not up to number one spot even with winning the world cup that didn't happen so it's unlikely to happen but there's been some impressive performances from certain nations and there's been some impressive gains as well if we look obviously the gambia still with that famous increase up to 56 uh, but there has been some really great performances from some unlikely nations like sudan have done very well at times kenya Mozambique, yeah, there has been some very impressive gains. There's only a few teams that have failed to, to move above their starting position. Uganda, Swaziland, Mauritius, South Sudan and Seychelles. Even Zanzibar have moved up a place and Djibouti have got up two places. So of course South Africa is still the only African nation to win the World Cup, hopefully in part four that will change. When it comes to Africa Cup of Nations, South Africa also the most, most successful team with Algeria winning four. The other African competition, Nigeria being very successful with nine wins. And the under-20 World Cup, Cameroon are the only t African nation to have won that twice. Egypt lead the way in club football. They've uh, Zamalek in particular. They've won all 23 of Egypt's Champions League wins. South Africa have had a few different teams manage to win the Champions League. Uh, Cameroon and Mali also pretty successful. Quite a few nations have managed to win or have, have had a club win the Champions League. And there's also quite a few players that have now won the Ballon d'Or. Of course, Camera won nine for Guinea, but we've seen Camaros win it. One player won three. Uh, Malawi, South Africa, the Al Congo, Tanzania, Libya, and Madagascar. Uh, there wasn't a player from Central African Republic, was there? I think that might be wrong. It was meant to be Cameroon. Just had a look. So Cameroon instead of Central African Republic. They've not really done anything in this experiment so yeah it's, it's been interesting i've not filled in the world cup um list the the spread i need to fill this in uh correctly and i've not added to the key player list either there's just so many now to to keep a track of we'll end it there then thank you for watching part three of this african football manager 2020 experiment 
Until next time, enjoy FM20, enjoy the rest of your day, I'll see you very soon.